Hello, everyone. The conversation about North Korea's participation in Russia's invasion of Ukraine continues, and the news sources themselves are admitting that, you know, they don't know everything, and a lot of the information coming in is disjointed and contradictory. So this piece is from BBC's Ukrainian correspondent talking about a unit of some 3,000 North Korean soldiers being formed within the Russian army, uh, according to Ukrainian intelligence. Um, so far, what everybody's saying is, well, we're not sure about this. Um, and we do know that Ukrainian intelligence does work very closely with the U.S. and U.K. Uh, intelligence. So, but so far, you know, I'm not sure why they don't want to say anything specific. Either they don't know or they know something that they would rather not share, which is, which is fine. But this does create a lot of question as to what is going on, what they're doing there. Um, is it true that they're just manning the North Korean missile launchers or are they actually going to participate in direct combat? Of course, Russian military and media are denying anything big, which they would, uh, because they... I, First of all, they wouldn't want to disclose just how much reinforcement they're getting from North Korea. It's bad enough that everybody now knows that they're getting missiles from North Korea, even though those missiles, a lot of them turned out to be complete shit. But, you know, they wouldn't want to know that they're also beefing up their army with North Korean troops and how much. Uh, of course, uh, Kremlin spokesperson uh, Peskov said, no, no, no. Of course, the you know the Americans and the British would say th things like that. They always do, and it never turns out to be true. Actually, turn that around. Usually, when Russian sources start denying something strenuously, it's probably worth looking at. So, as much as they're currently denying the participation of North Korean soldiers, I would definitely take a look. What do we get from the Allies? Something like this. So U.S. says, yeah, there is a growing support from North Korea. And yes, we already have a confirmation that they have been supplying Russia with um, ammunition and missile. Um, it's a good question as to why Russia would need troops. I mean, so far we've had the impression that Russia had an endless supply of bodies to throw at the front lines. However, we do have a lot of casualties. We do have a lot of people who are frankly getting the hell out of there and good on them. You know, we, I'm sure, have this on both sides, Russian and Ukrainian, people who are dodging joining the army, because anybody with functional brain knows that um, if they go to the Ukrainian front, chances are their life expectancy is going to go down dramatically. And there's not a lot of volunteers to become sunflowers. So, and again... For all of Russia's insistence that, you know, North Korea is our friend, it's our ally, and so on and so forth, we have a mutual agreement, all of that is true. But, as I mentioned before, I'm sure nationalism plays its role in this. We've seen this in numerous interviews with Russian citizens, we've seen this in statements by Russian lawmakers, Russians are notoriously nationalistic. And if they have an option to send somebody, anybody other than a Russian national into battle, they will. You know, we've seen them send Indians. We've seen them uh, send folks from Africa. We've seen them send folks from 
South America. Um, we've seen them recruit people from uh, parts of Russia that are populated by non-Russian uh, nationals, such as Yakuts, Bashkirs, Mordovians, Karelians, and so on and so forth, because to Russians, in their minds, their lives are less valuable. So, if some North Koreans want to go and break their necks at the Ukrainian front, they're just fine with that, as long as it's not them. Now, this is a concern, and this actually is worth uh, paying attention to. What will North Korea get in return? First of all, we talked about the growing unease in South Korea about all of this, and the fact that now North Korea gets to perfect its missiles using them against Ukrainian civilians, but also North Korea being a country heavily in sanctions will always look for ways to somehow circumnavigate them. And that is one of the ways. Russia has no problem with their sanctions. Russia itself is sanctioned through the roof. So the two of them are working in tandem to see what they can come up with. So since the two of them have a military agreement, it goes both ways. So if Russia has something North Korea wants, can you say nuclear technology, boys and girls? Let's give that some thought because that could be on the table. And again, you know, this is not productive so far. U.S. said it was concerned. Guys, seriously? That's it. You're concerned. You know, right, that concern doesn't work. And we are looking at two allies who are both dictatorships with brainwashed people that are arming each other and you're concerned do better this continues to be a disappointment Zelensky peace plan again not just me but people a lot smarter than me uh, people who have a lot more experience in um, the matters of politics economy diplomacy and so on and so forth are agreeing his so-called peace plan is a wish list and there's a big difference a plan is something that you plan to do yourself it's something that you intend to do it's a series of actions with timelines that you would like to carry out to achieve a specific goal that's a plan what he has on the table now is a Christmas list Look at what is on that. It's everything that he wants other people to do without saying what he will do if that doesn't happen. For example, Ukraine joining NATO. <sighs> NATO requires a consensus. If three NATO members are against somebody joining, then the, the nation cannot join. This is what happened with the most recent additions to NATO. Because we have pro-Russian countries or kind of um, semi-neutral Russian allies such as Turkey, such as Slovakia, Slovakia, such as Serbia, such as Hungary, who are NATO members already and they will oppose. We know this. So how is that part of a plan? And of course, the other parts are equally dependent on the decision of other countries. The long-range weapons, the continued aid, the reconstructions, all that jazz. Meanwhile, we have some grave news coming from Kharkiv region in the northeast. The formerly um, liberated city of Kupiansk is currently again under the danger of occupation. Zaporizhia is getting pounded on a daily basis. Russians are going to start complaining again about Russophobia in Ukraine because Ukrainians are increasingly rejecting um, Russian-affiliated everything, including religious groups, because they're being used for political gain. And we have continuous suppression of any type of opposition, just like this gentleman who was arrested because his daughter drew a, an anti-war picture at school. <laughs> 